Hey, howdy ho, it is your ho, Tim here. Welcome back to another video. This is the history of Call of Duty Treyarch boss zombies. Take a seat. Grab your beverage of choice, lube up, let's go. The very first boss zombie dates all the way back to June of 2009 with the release of Shinonuma in World of War. This very first boss zombie was the Hellhound. The Devil's Dogs. <laughs> no match for the U.S. Marines. That's neither Hellhound certainly added an interesting dynamic to the game that previously hadn't been there with Nocturne, Toten, and Verruckt. On those maps, with only one enemy type being the classic zombie, admittedly it was a little boring and one-dimensional. But now, every five rounds or so, you have the opportunity to earn a glorious max ammo by killing a bunch of animals. I think that's a fair trade. Now, despite the chaos and the panic... These rounds are relatively easy, and especially relieving for high rounders who stare at their monitor for the better part of their existence. Thanks to their highly terrifying and highly successful debut on Shinonuma, Hellhounds found themselves on a myriad of other maps down the road, including Derice, Kino, Moon, on the three green run maps, Town, Farm, and Bus Depot by choice. Of course, the Giant, Der Eisendrak, Blood of the Dead, Classified, Togder, Toten, and Firebase Z. Clearly, over the years, there were times in which Treyarch couldn't think of a brand new boss zombie idea, hence why we have Lightning Hounds and Alpha Omega, and why we have Plague Hounds and D-Machine, just different elemental variants of the Hellhound. But at the end of the day, they're all the same. Hellhounds are an absolute joy and an absolute classic to have in the mode. They were the first, and they are probably the most frequent. There is a reason why we reference other boss zombie rounds as dog rounds. They are simply too iconic. I want to give a quick shout out to my boy Edward Richtofen for teleporting and thus mutating an innocent dog named Fluffy and infusing it with 115 so it could look like this. Before and afters are shocking, aren't they? Now it's 2011, Black Ops just came out, and Kino Der Toten, the brand new zombies map, is the talk of the town. Hellhounds wasted no time becoming a staple in the mode after being in three consecutive maps. Back to back to back. Additionally, on Kino Der Toten, there were these new things. What they are, I guess we'll call them Nova Crawlers. These guys crawl on all fours. They're not the same height as the regular zombies, so you have to constantly change where you're aiming, either at the ground or in the air. Then after you shoot them, they have the audacity to explode. Like a giant fart. Like a giant smelly fart. And it fucks up your vision big time. I, for one, don't particularly care for them. I think they've made too many appearances. They've been on Kino, Five, they teleport around on the moon. Don't even get me started with that and they're unclassified. Though not exactly the same, Treyarch got creative with the crawler model over the years. On Die Rise, what's commonly referred to as a jumping jack, aka a leaper, is basically a Nova Crawler on Coke. Oh, look at that, and Alpha Omega's failing miserably at trying to be creative again with jolting jacks, aka electric crawlers, and Nova 6 bombers, aka poison crawlers. Can you seriously look at this man's face and tell him that he is not a Nova Crawler at heart? Black Ops also launched with another map. What was the name of that one again? The one that got completely overshadowed by Kino. Oh yes, Five. Yeah, that's right. And we were introduced to the Pentagon Thief. A scientist who likely on copious amounts of psychedelics is running around trying to steal our guns. Just like our government. <laughs> kill him in time and get your gun back, you get a max ammo along with a fire sale. And if you kill him without him even touching you, you get a bonfire sale, baby. Which allows you to pack a bunch of your gun for only 1,000 points. The Pentagon Thief is a controversial boss, to say the least. A lot of people hate him. Some people like him. I'm one of the people that like him. I think he adds a necessary dynamic of chaos and panic within the map. Everybody, when the Pentagon Thief arrives, runs around like chickens with their heads cut off. And that is the beauty of it. Just hearing this is enough to make a grown man Hello his underwear brown. Now let's talk about monkeys. Yeah, monkeys. For whatever reason, Treyarch thought it would be a grand idea to fight off a bunch of small, nimble targets with a vicious temper. On Ascension, there are space monkeys that fall from outer space and decide to start fucking your perk machines. And then on Shangri-La, there's an entirely different set of monkeys with different intentions. Okay, these are the ones that like to steal your drops. Pest is an understatement. It is total anarchy when these guys show up. And although, yes, you can take advantage of them and you can manipulate them to do some pretty cool and illegal stuff for you, the sheer quantity of them is staggering. I'll be crying if I look like that too, bro. That's fucked up what they be doing to y'all. Sandwiched in between those two maps is good old Call of the Dead. One of my favorite maps of all time. The boss zombie is not very reflective of my opinion. In this corner, coming out of the hypothermic water, with an electric pole, with a tall erect posture, the guy you know from the films, ladies and gentlemen, Stan Lee. Except his name is actually George, and he follows you throughout the entire game! Throughout the entirety 
of the time you exist on this map, he is following you. I guess nobody taught this guy what personal space is. Good grief. I mean, you can't get away from him. He smells kind of bad, too. You know, he's got that old man stench. I tried showing him affection. I tried touching him, but when you do that, he throws a fucking temper tantrum, and he goes into this rage fit where he sprints around and tries to murder you. And you know what? He also does that when he touches you. Not only when you touch him, when he touches you. You can actually kill him and be rewarded handsomely for doing so, may I add. But the problem is, it's one of those he can't actually die sort of deals. You know, sort of like in the movies. He just inexplicably comes back to life, and there's no resolution to it. He just continues to come back. He's like the gift that keeps on giving. He's kind of like herpes. Having to survive a zombie apocalypse in a frozen wasteland is one thing, but having to survive a zombie apocalypse in a frozen wasteland while a seven foot tall man baby is following you is an entirely other thing. Speaking of following you throughout the entire game, who the fuck invited this guy? <laughs> Thinks he's such hot stuff. <laughs> uh, I'll leave. Nope, just kidding. And I'm even back with another Shangri-La boss. How many are there? Seemingly endless. However, there is another boss zombie that follows you throughout the entire game at a mind-numbing pace. Some say that he's the devil himself. Some say that he is the epitome of evil. I'm talking, of course, about the astronaut. This guy doesn't die either. Constantly resurrects himself with a different name each time to try to throw people off. But I think we all know what's going on. What is his purpose? What is his objective? Well, <laughs> one thing's clear. To fuck your day up. He grabs you, has his fucking way with you, takes one of your perks... I'm going to repeat that, takes one of your perks at random and teleports you to an undisclosed location somewhere randomly in the map. He tries tricking you into thinking that he's your homie, he's there for you, but really he isn't and he never will be. Don't get me wrong, I love Black Ops. It's my favorite Call of Duty. It's like my childhood friend, but the problem is there are too many cancerous boss zombies in this game. So let's fast forward a couple of years to Black Ops 2. The pace is picking up tremendously here. There's a brand new, giant, innovative, expansive zombies map on the cusp. You may remember it. <laughs> Seemingly, everybody loved transit at first, but public opinion didn't waste any time changing. <laughs> Thanks to the like of people like Patrick. Coming in at number one on our top five worst zombie maps of all time, we have transit. Transit is by far the worst zombies map of all time. You start on this little bus depot and everything is just shitty. Shitty colors, shitty atmosphere, shitty characters, shitty everything. There are a lot of things to hate about transit, most notably the lava, the fog, getting the jet gun, getting pack-a-punch on, the story, the characters, the whole lab. Wow, I mean, <laughs> I don't think there's a good quality. I mean, there's a bus that's supposed to take you around the map and provide you with comfort and convenience and safety, but unfortunately, the bus driver is a useless, limp-dicked, robotic cum dumpster who takes pride in leaving you behind. And so now, you are faced with a dilemma. You can either sit there for a month and wait for him to loop all the way back around, or you could simply make a run for it. And by choosing to make a run for it, really, you've chosen death, because not only are you hopping over lava pits, and trying to see through impossibly thick fog, but there's also these little gremlins that stick to your face and fuck you until you bleed. They're called denizens. I'm not sure what a denizen is. I'm not sure if that's a legitimate creature out in the wild or not. I would doubt that. <laughs> I don't think it would be. I mean, just look at it. It got me thinking, what is the purpose of the denizens? What do they provide? They don't give you any sort of reward for killing them. There seems to be an unlimited number of them. You won't see the end of it. My theory is that they were put in place to simply slow the player down because last gen couldn't handle transit's aspirations. The map simply can't fully load at the rate in which you sprint. Their existence is predicated on you not crashing the game. So they were put in place forcefully to make the game work, which is why they're a terrible boss. Before we leave this dumpster fire of a map, the cherry on top of the Sunday here, folks, is Avocado. Avocadro. He's some sort of electric zombie that goes around the map and shocks you a whole bunch. I actually don't have gameplay of him outside of the power station because I can't play transit that long without getting a migraine and swollen testicles. You thought his menial existence was over with transit, but no, he was carried on into the way future with Alpha Omega in Black Ops 4. He made a return to the good old Camp Edward. Can't hate on the guy for getting a promotion, though. On transit, his presence felt completely unwarranted on this map. He pretty much drives it. He is the final boss fight before completing the Easter egg. After three consecutive unsuccessful, or at the very least controversial, zombies maps, we finally got to a good one. The Mob of the Dead. The map's a prison. There's prisoner zombies, and so naturally, there's a warden zombie. He's big, he's buff, and he's pissed off. We actually meet this guy for the first time in the intro cinematic, known as Stanley Ferguson. He's a modest, hardworking guy. But then, somewhere along the way, he turned into this. And now we call him Brutus. Brutus is an absolute unit. He's a prototypical 
boss zombie. He fills that tanky zombie role perfectly. Runs around the map, tries to murder you, tries to lock things down, so you have to pay to open them back up. Kind of hate that about you, Brutus. Naturally, he made a reappearance on Blood of the Dead, since Blood of the Dead is a reimagined version of Mob of the Dead. Like Avogadro, Brutus got a promotion in Black Ops 4, big time. He's much more involved in the story. Who's broke now? Who's broke now? Buried is one of the most unique maps out there, and I think the ghosts are in large part why. Unlike virtually every boss zombie out there, these ones stay put. You go through them. In order to get to pack a bunch, you've got to venture through this giant haunted mansion full of bitches trying to steal your cash. These gals provide a completely different dynamic than the classic tank boss zombie that follows you throughout the entire game. To face them is optional, and the reward for facing them, I think, is appropriate. A free perk drop. Thank you. It's like running fucking Luigi's Mansion. And you can do it over and over again, too. You can stack up on extra perks. You can get all of them. Up next, possibly the most infamous boss zombie ever. The Panzer sold that. I fear the sound Without a singular doubt in my mind, the Panzer sold that is responsible for the majority of my deaths amongst all boss zombies. This guy is a fucking menace. What a debut this guy had. He made his presence known right the fuck away. I mean, could you imagine spawning into this map for the first time, spending the first couple of rounds hanging out, learning the ropes, and then all of a sudden this giant metal dickhead falls from the sky? and attacks you. If you don't die, surely you'll be rattled from PTSD for the remainder of your small life. He places so much urgency and so much emphasis on the setup process in the beginning of the game. You've got to grab a staff or some high-end weapon before round eight. You've got seven rounds to figure your shit out, <laughs> or you are screwed. To torment us in Origins alone simply wouldn't be enough for the Panzer. He reappeared twice more in the future, both under Eisendrak and on Revelations. The Panzer is real danger on any given round. He only appears every couple of rounds, so you won't be seeing too much of him. And I also will say that he has been placed on maps in which he perfectly fits with. He is placed on relatively easy maps with very powerful wonder weapons. So while I can say he is a major pain in my dick, he is also a very necessary component for some of the greatest maps of all time. I really do love and hate the Panzer at the same time. What's noteworthy is that there are actually two different variants of the Panzer. There's the Black Ops 2 variant on Origins, and then there's the Black Ops 3 variant under Eisendrak and Revelations. The Panzer's magnetic hook is replaced with an electric charge in the Black Ops 3 maps. Just before we abort Black Ops 2, there are also what's called on Origins Templar zombies. On Origins, instead of having one singular power switch, there are six. Thanks for that. And every couple of rounds, these zombies hound down one of the generators and bust it, and then go on to the next. In a big domino effect of taking out power throughout the entire map, it's a giant pain in the ass. I actually fucking hate these guys. Fast forward through years of seasonal depression within the zombies community, it is now November of 2015. I had actually, at the time, recently turned 15 years old. Crazy stat right there. You know what game I'm referring to, right? I mean, it is the almighty zombies game. It is the holy grail of the series. Black Ops 3. And of course, the launch map. The first impression for the game was Shadows of Evil, which had a myriad of confusing looking boss zombies. To put a tremendously long story short, Black Ops 3 zombies at large, but Shadows of Evil specifically, was heavily influenced by HP Lovecraft lore. If you're wondering what HP Lovecraft lore is, it's a bunch of intergalactic squid beings that live under the ocean too or some shit. I don't know, you're talking to the wrong guy. Google it, do your own research. Why do I gotta do all the work? God, you're so lazy. I'm just kidding, I love you. The biggest and proudest of the bunch is what's referred to as a margwa. It is a three-headed tentacle monster that is able to walk on its hind legs. It's walking on two legs. It's bipedal. Right, but that's not what bipedal means. That's what apes do. I'm getting so far off track. Honestly, I'm going to fanboy over the Margwa for a little bit. He is my personal favorite boss zombie. He is a classic tank boss zombie, like a Brutus, like a Panzer who walks around, absorbs a bunch of bullets. But this guy rewards you greatly for killing him. You get 500 points per head you shoot off. He actually increases speed with every head you shoot off, so... You know, the more heads you're shooting off of him, the faster he is getting. You also get the Margwa's Heart, which is an integral piece for the Wonder Weapon on the map. He spawns in frequently enough to remind you that he is a presence, but not frequently enough to piss you off, which is the perfect balance. And honestly, just props for being creative. I mean, shit. I wouldn't have woke up in the morning and thought, hey, 
This guy should be a boss zombie. He would have been what caused me to wake up in the first place. This guy is in my nightmares. Interestingly enough, the Margwa did reappear on Revelations, but not in the exact same form. There are actually two different variants of the Margwa that can spawn in on that map. There's the Void Margwa, and then there's the Fire Margwa. Not to be confused with the standard Margwa. These guys can shoot bodily fluids at you. What the fuck is that thing? Looks like some sort of bug. Oh, there's so many of them. Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, thankfully, individually, they're not very intimidating, but geez, Louise. I mean, what do these things serve? What is their purpose? Is it possible that they are a not very well thought out filler dog round? Oh, no! It's an angry Italian cuisine! God bless Treyarch. Love them. But they do this thing where instead of making a new enemy type with new assets, they just reuse all their assets. This is clearly an attempt to make another boss for another boss sake. They're just the reps! from multiplayer, but reskin! I find it fascinating how everybody in the community universally accepted the label meatballs for these creatures, when really, the official name for them, and I just found this out while doing research for this video, the official name for these things, Insanity Elemental. No, they're meatballs. There are also what are called keepers. Now, in order to explain their purpose and their origin, that would require me to delve into the zombie storyline, which is an entire video in and of itself. I'd prefer to not even get into that. But I will say, they are very infrequent and they are very weak. This is, by definition, a filler boss. But like I alluded to, they are significant in the storyline. Keepers can be found on Shadows of Evil, Zetsubo no Shima, Revelations, and in the form of a giant boss fight under Isendrak. This boss fight was the first official one. Now, in the past, on a couple of maps, there were some semi-boss fights. You know, there was some action, but this was the first revolutionary official boss fight. If we put ourselves back in 2016, this was seriously game-changing. This was completely removed from the standard map as well. And as history tells, this would start a trend for the rest of Black Ops 3. Each map going forward would have an official boss fight at the end of the Easter egg. We're almost done with Shadows of Evil. Don't give up on me, goddammit. For the 700th boss zombie on Shadows of Evil, we have the Shadow Man. The one and the only. Now, like the Keepers, the origin tale is a very, very long one, but to put it simply, he is... A boss? Is that an appropriate word? You trap him in the summoning key on Shadows of Evil, he then breaks out in Revelations, and then you kill him in the official boss fight. You know what? After all of those boss zombies and Shadows of Evil, I think we all deserve a quick little break. Ugh, you know what, during that break I was looking at my notes and I just realized that Zetsubo no Shima actually has a ton of boss zombies as well. So, like, there's this island, right, and it's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean somewhere, and a bunch of dudes decided to do a bunch of experiments and mutate the wildlife there, both animals and plants, and now there's just a bunch of oversized monstrosities walking around, which includes, but is not limited to, giant fucking spiders and even bigger spider and i'm not quite sure what you would call this if you saw it in real life Treyarch calls them thrashers so they're thrashers and an even bigger thrasher who swallowed my boy takio which is not cool and then we commence in an ancient japanese ritual just wiped out tomato town my friend just gone down i revived him now we're heading southbound this might be an unpopular opinion, but honestly, I do not mind the spiders. I think they match the atmosphere very well, and they're very easy to kill. They're very weak. It's a perfect dog round. And as for the bigger spider, not even that bad. Serves as a mid-game boss that you can obtain Widow's Wine from for free, and also an integral part for the Wonder Weapon. It's actually the Thrasher that pisses me off to no end. Quite possibly the worst boss zombie ever. Thrashers are made when mommy and daddy love each other very much. No, just kidding, that's not how it goes. A giant fucking spore in the wall pulsing for life bursts open and takes over a zombie and it becomes this giant fucking swamp monster. Mind you, there are dozens of these spores scattered throughout the entire map. The quantity of these guys, flat out unacceptable. They spawn in just about every round and more than once per round. And when I say more than once, I mean upwards of like five or six times if you get unlucky. And it's not like there's any consistency to it. Sometimes they just shoot up out of the ground. Sometimes the spores don't actually infect the zombies. Sometimes they do. It's a big mess. Individually, they're not very hard to kill, but like I said, in a herd, 
along with zombies and spiders. It can prove challenging. There are three different targets you have to shoot on its body. Then when you kill the thrasher, you don't get a reward. That's another big problem. It explodes and infects nearby zombies and it's a vicious cycle of thrashers. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Remove thrashers from this map, instantly gets better. No, 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 no. Communism is bad, kids. Holy hell in a handbasket, that did something! When in Mother Russia, make a painfully stereotypical tank boss zombie with a sickle and a portal gun. How can you sit here with a straight face and tell me that the Mangler is not Brutus 2.0? We're in the midst of World War II Stalingrad, but no, Garad Kroby said. Artificially intelligent super drone. You know what bothers me even more than that about the Valkyrie drones? How big they are? You know how much space they occupy? They block entrances, they block training paths. Guess what else? They electrocute you! They shock you! Especially when you're not looking. And then they'll hide, and then they'll start shitting on a bunch of electric zombies that then start chasing you. What a nightmare. Garad Krovi would instantly improve without Valkyrie drones the exact same way Zetsubo would improve without Thrashers. I don't know, to me, the Valkyrie drones could not fit less with the atmosphere of Garad Krovi. It felt like such a forced attempt at a dog wave, you know what I mean? And paired up with a futuristic drone is an ancient medieval dragon. My voice gets like this when I talk for long periods of time. I'm not actually reading a script. This is all improv. This is all off the top of my head. I do have notes. I have a checklist of all the bosses here, but that's it. It's just me talking. Back to the program. Another great conclusion to a great DLC. Another epic battle. First, we team up with good old Nikolai to kill a dragon. Pretty cool killing a dragon in Call of Duty Zombies. You never thought that was going to happen. Unfortunately, there was a big breakdown of miscommunication between Nikolai and us, so... Now he's trying to murder us. In a giant mech suit, not only with a minigun, but with some sort of spear launcher. I mean, this is just unbelievable shit. I think it's the most intense and most engaging boss fight of all of them in Black Ops 3, but I love them all so much. This one was just so special. Very challenging. Why the parasites back? They just don't deserve it. Not only that, but the amount of them on this map is quadruple. Oh, hey, look! Spiders are back! Why, you may be wondering? Well, Revelations is a big map. We need more minuscule space occupants. What else? What else? Oh! Furries. Furies. A peculiar-looking fella. The way I see it, these are those teleporting novas, but on steroids. That's actually it for Revelations and therefore Black Ops 3. There are actually nine total different enemy types on this map, most of which I've already gone over. Hey guys, what is going on? My name is NoJ456, and today it's a tutorial for you guys on how to build the shield on Voyage of Despair. It's actually a pretty darn easy shield to build. Oh, ah yes, Black Ops 4, the most controversial zombies game to date. Some people loved the game, some people shot it with a rifle. Today, we're going to be shooting my 1903 Springfield, and we're going to be destroying my copy of Black Ops 4. That, that, that's it. That's it? Yeah. Hey, you're not going to say anything else? No. Why, why would I? That's stupid. We'll start off with Voyage of Despair with what's called a Stoker, another classic tank boss zombie. He's a bullet sponge, doesn't really reward you much for killing him, and he does show up too often, in my opinion. You know, it's kind of like the dad that's too involved in your life. You always hear about the dad that's not involved in their kids' lives, but you never hear about the one that's too involved. That was an analogy that should not have been made. Sorry, he gives me fatherly vibes. <laughs> Don't let kids Ironically, the other boss zombie on this map's name is the Blightfather. It is a giant thing. I don't have a word for this thing. Do, do you? I. They're called Blightfathers. Who is coming up with these names? <laughs> Seriously. Anyways, this guy is really tough to take down without a specialist or a wonder weapon or some sort of really high-end weapon. But it's doable. He likes to throw up everywhere. Kind of annoying. He's a hefty boy. He is a little bit higher than the standard tank boss zombie. He is... A handful and a half to deal with. He also makes an appearance on Nine and Ancient Evil, two maps with a plethora of other giant intimidating boss zombies to tag along with it. It's really a nightmare. You've probably noticed that the further we get into this video, the more boss zombies there are per map. For what reason, I'm not sure. I actually find it very irritating having to deal with so many different enemy types because you have to adjust your play style in so many different ways in such a short span. With that being said, let me introduce you to... 
the catalyst zombies. There are four of them, each with their own respective element. There's a fire, a water, a poison, and a lightning zombie. And they each do their own little thing to piss you off in one way or another. Okay, the fire one kind of walks around at a slow pace like a napalm zombie, explodes, can hurt you quite a bit. The water one likes to infect nearby zombies and increase their health, which is probably the worst one. The poison one is a poison one and explodes and poisons you. There's a lightning one that can shock you and blind you. Thank you, Treyarch. We needed these boss zombies. They weren't forced whatsoever. These guys appear on all four chaos maps, and while we're on Voyage of Despair, here's a giant eyeball on the sky for the final boss fight. Nine. Oh, what a good map. There are so many boss zombies, though. How about those tigers, huh? I mean, gosh. They serve the exact same purpose as the Hellhound, but these are cooler, I'm not gonna lie. They're so far, we already have zombies, catalyst zombies, blight fathers, tigers, and to put the cherry on top of the Sunday here, folks, we have... Requies. And Requies. That's what I refer to them as, but there is a technical name. Uh, this one is called the Destroyer, and this one is called a Marauder. Big, intimidating, take a lot of bullets to kill. You guys know the drill. The Marauders have blades on their hands, and the Destroyers are in full body armor with axes. And they can throw the axes. And the boss fight is a giant elephant. How come a wolf is the only thing that can be a were? There's no were owl or a were spider. Is it werewolf? I think it's just more about the alliteration more than anything else. Genuine terror washes over me when the werewolf spawns in. Very intimidating boss. He's a big tanky boy, sort of the equivalent of a Blight Father, hence why the Blight Father isn't on Dead of the Night. By the way, what I did for this and all Black Ops 4 gameplay was I went into custom mutations. I set it to werewolves only and I set their spawn rate up quadruple. So there was nothing but werewolves in the map and there were a fuck ton of them. And I'm gonna level with you guys. I'm not afraid to admit this. I mean, I. I've had bad nightmares of werewolves. I've had dreams of werewolves chasing me around. Like, big fucking intimidating ones, like the ones on Dead of the Night. That's why they scare me so much, honestly. Every time I play Dead of the Night, I experience PTSD. Truly. But somehow, there's a boss zombie that coexists with werewolves on Dead of the Night that makes me want to play the map even less than the werewolves do. The Nosferatus are, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the most irritating boss zombies the game has to offer. Truly, a disgrace to the mode. What sounds like on paper a sublime idea to be killing vampires in Call of Duty, in reality ended up being an absolute disaster. The Nosferatus have a lot of baggage. Okay, number one, the quantity. Unreasonable. Overwhelming is an understatement. There are far too many of these things on the map at once. They're super nimble, super fast, super shifty. They're really good at maneuvering around corners, lunging at you, attacking you. They make what is otherwise a fun and engaging map Borderline unplayable. Plus, this one gets really handsy. And the map is concluded with a werewolf on PED. You know, come to think of it, these guys are like Nosferatus, but with spears. Spartoi? Spartois? Either way, that's how you pronounce this guy's fucking name. Speaking of skeletons, there was some on Drac a while ago, but I didn't think they mattered enough to mention, but I guess this is a cool time to do it. This guy kind of reminds me of a Ben 10 alien. One with four arms, perhaps? Nope, actually, he's got six. This guy's a cold son of a bitch. Walks around with a cool, calm, collective demeanor. Just fucks you up. The Giganese is not my favorite, not my least favorite boss. He serves his purpose, though, as a bullet sponge. He and the Blightfather paired together on this map is a recipe for an increased blood pressure. The Chaos storyline comes to an end with Ancient Evil. It all concludes with a really fun boss fight. Honestly, one of the better ones. It's very similar to the Garak Krovi boss fight. The first phase is killing the Pegasus, and the second phase is killing Perseus. <laughs> It looks like we got a 69 in progress. I'm gonna need you to send me in some good ass backup. The Megaton couldn't look more like an 80s arcade monster. I guess it's fitting since this is the Cold War era. D-Machine is of course one of the most recent maps to date, but what's interesting is that the Megaton already feels like a classic boss zombie. He has every good quality a good boss zombie should have. I love the Megaton. Wait, why are the two of you now? I take back everything I just said. We're at the end of the video now. We've caught all the way back up to the current zombies map, Firebase Z. Oh, dude, look, this item is totally non-conspicuous. Let's pick it up. Oh my god. Wow, I'm so surprised that that is a boss zombie. I had no idea. A lot of boss zombies names don't make any sense, but this one does. Very much so. It mimics items, and then it springs out and molests you. Get to round 30 to fight... Orda? Ah, 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 what did I say about communism? Get, get, get the fuck out of here. That, my friends, is the history of Call of Duty Treyarch boss zombies. Mannequins? 
armor zombies? What other half-ass attempt at a boss zombie did I forget? Let me know in the comments. I'm sure I forgot one or two. For the record, this was one of my favorite videos to make of all time on my channel. Please leave a like if you would like another video like this in the near future. Maybe the history of COD perks or COD guns or... I don't know, just let me know. Let's get to 10k likes, boys. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Check out all of the links in the description. Thank you so much. I hope you have a fantastic day.